Okay, I think we're up, aren't we? Good morning, good morning. That's our blue garbage truck down there this morning. I guess his regular truck is in for maintenance or something. It's the same guy and he's picking up the same garbage, only the truck is different. So. It's been really quiet this morning. I've been sitting out here for an hour or so this morning outside the shop. It's really quiet. Oriental Bakery. 7-Eleven. Did the renovation in the cafe finish? Not sure what you mean. The renovation across the street. It's not a cafe. It's a bar. No, it's it's. They're still taking stuff out. They haven't started putting anything back in yet. In fact, that's a problem. It may be a problem for our stream because the job they were doing yesterday. And this is in the place directly across the street from us. You can see it, the old-fashioned place. They were jackhammering up the old concrete floor all during, all afternoon and up to the time. They, they can work from 8 till 8 making noise. They were jackhammering the floor with all their doors wide open and the rest of us were going nuts. And maybe they'll be doing it again today. I don't know. Or perhaps they're off for the weekend. Hopefully. Who knows? The cafe next to the whale restaurant. It's, it's, well, there's a cafe on the other side of the whale restaurant. The, the renovation is happening in the bar this side of the whale restaurant. When you look at it from here to the right of the whale restaurant, they've gutted the whole place. They've even ripped out the stairs that went upstairs. It's Jackhammer City around here these days. The, the building at the corner, when you look out to our right, the building just out of sight to the right where they used to sell the um, Daigaku Imo, the roasted potatoes, that building's being torn down. They've shrouded it, they've put trucks, they're jackham jackhammering, throwing into the trucks. And then the hotel behind us, what was it called? The little Hotel 3000, I forget the name of it. Something 3000 was the name of it because you paid 3,000 yen per night for a, for a bunk. That building is being torn down. Also, same thing, jackhammering. So we're getting echoes of jackhammers all over the place. All right, it's Saturday morning here. I'll be here by myself for the stream. Ayano-san won't be showing up because she's a, a weekday employee here, so it'll just be me. And there's a, a plethora of jobs. I have to choose what to do. We've got our usual Surfer carving is still here. I won't be doing that this morning. I've got two requests from other workers here. Ayumi-san, doing her job on the Matsushima print, has requested another block. It turns out that when I did the work, when I did the color separation earlier, well, we were doing a reverse engineering on the old block, so it was very difficult to figure out what's going on, and I missed a place. I missed the bottom of this boat. So rather than plug that block, she and I chatted about it. She also wanted this roof area to be re, re shaped So what we did was we picked a new piece of wood and we're going to carve the part that I missed, the redo of the roof shape, and we're going to do another copy of the, of the sail tone because it's on the same color. So it'll be the sail tone, the shading on the block, and it'll be a block for the roof up here, which is a double tone over something else. And then on the other block, I'll take this sail off the previous block. So, so that's waiting. She also wants me to open up more. These, these are little slots in the C, which open to show the yellow. Pull out, zoom in the slots here on one of the C blocks. This is the original doi version and this is the test version she's done and you can see these slots are too narrow. We're not getting enough yellow. There's the original version. Here's the new cut we've got and I cut them a bit. Uh, I drew them a bit on the light side so we have to open these up. So she wants me to do that over the weekend so that it's ready for her Monday when she comes back. But I'm not going to do that either. Pull out. I'm not going to do that either because there's another job that's got a higher priority. She wants that Monday, but there's another higher priority job. Our New Year's card is being carved by Kawasaki-san down in Kobe. And she has now finished 
the key block and she wants the color separations and she needs them for Monday morning to get carving, which means I have to ship them the day before Sunday, which means I've got to do them today or Sunday. This is the upcoming New Year's card. So I've got to ask you all to close your eyes, please. <laughs> and I think you can see the derivation of the design here. Some of you may have seen this design before. As I said, close your eyes, just forget what I just told you. This is, you know, an upcoming print. And you know where we got it from. Of course, we've taken it from a photo that appeared on our Instagram channel a couple of weeks ago. And this is part of our building. Upstairs on this building, we have what's known as a shachi hoko. So I have to make now color separations for this. And we're going to do that. In fact, that, that'll be today's job. I've got the blank wood here. I've got three blank pieces of wood. And my job over the next few hours is to convert these to color blocks ready for carving with all the designs pasted down. It's kind of a pity Kawasaki-san doesn't do that by herself, but uh, whatever, she's got a different skill set. Okay, before we do that, though, I've got to clean up my desk. There is something else to show. This is not part of show and tell. It's another thing dumped on my... Out. This is the second batch. Ayumi-san has given me her second batch of Bonodori prints. These now have to be sent to Ome so they can go out on their way to the, to the waiting collectors. Oh, it's all wrapped up already. Doesn't matter. The first group of these, she gave me 31 of them first. They're already on their way. No, they're on their way. People are receiving them already. This is the second group of 31 prints. Tell you what, they're wrapped up, so let me show you one of the ones that's a reject so you can see the print close up. This is what she looks like. This is one of the reject copies. It's turned out really, really, really well. I'm so happy with this. Jed is working on a follow-up. We have, we have paper problems on this one. I can't go out. Jed is working on a follow-up. So there will be more. There will be more. More to come. That has to go only for packing and shipping. Any printers in today, there will be two printers. There's two packs out. Ishikawa-san is upstairs. She will be working on the November. She will be working on the second batch. No, she's a lead-off batter. She's working on the first batch of prints for the November subscriptions. And this weekend is her deadline. So it's probably going to be finished today or perhaps tomorrow. The Tokaido group of prints. Then also up there, Ayumi-san, and she's working on, what is she doing? She's alternating something. Maybe she's doing November subscription prints as well. Okay, now here we go. How much to explain and how much to just watch? I don't know. We'll explain a little bit as we go through here. There's, those of you who have never seen this before, we have the key block finished and now I have to prepare color blocks and there are going to be one, two, three, four, five, there are going to be seven color faces. So we're going to use the back of the key block and we're going to use seven faces. And the job is to transfer the image from the key block over to the new wood for the color block so that the carver, for example, we need a sky block here which has to go around the shape. How do we transfer that shape over here? There are two or three different ways to do this, and we're going to look at a couple of them today. So let me just get going. And the first step of this is I have to print this thing onto seven more sheets of paper. We have also some design items printed out from the original Photoshop file that have been prepared, taken from the original photograph. But step one is to print the key lines onto these sheets of paper.
how do we get the camera set up here? Let's see, we don't need the blank paper in the view. We do need this in the view. Oh, I shouldn't be using slippery. I should be using non-slip. Hang on a sec. What a mess. Who's responsible for this place anyway? Okay, that should look, that should show us all the gear. Okay. Okay, this is not normal printing. Normal printing is done on moistened paper. Very careful attention to how the moisture balance is gonna go. This is not that case. We are printing on dry paper today. If we print on moistened paper, we have very much risk of the paper distorting while we transfer. And the paper I'm going to print on, I've got two kinds. The first four sheets here are just blank paper. The next sheets have gumpy paper laid on to them. There's going to be two approaches to making the color transfers. You'll see as we go along the two different approaches. Can I not ink the carved block and place it directly onto the uncarved block? Well, the basic problem there is it would be backwards. It would be a mirror image, which wouldn't uh, wouldn't wouldn't work for us. There is a method similar to what you're describing. In fact, I've mentioned that many times before on the stream, the Yoshida family. They have a jig on their bench. The block goes ka-chunk into the jig, and they ink it with roller, with a, an ink, not wet pigment. They roll it with, with oil ink, and they pull a, pull a cover down, a plastic sheet. Rub on the back of the plastic sheet, lift it up, take the old block out, put the new block in, run the plastic sheet back down, and now it transfers onto that piece of wood. And that's a, not a bad system, as long as you don't need fine, delicate lines, because it, it smears and smudges too much for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, I've got a problem with my baron here. This is a baron that used to be in the print party in the back room here, and I stole it when we closed the print parties, and it's torn. Look at this. You can see the inside. How embarrassing. So I'm going to have to try and rub this without, uh, without ripping it to shreds. <laughs> Where's the torn part? Let's try it this way. image it's too bright here today isn't it what if I now some questions here obviously I've just printed this on yellow paper there's no gum piece so what am I going to do with this what use can it possibly be I can't paste this down onto a new piece of wood for carving. So what's going on here? All will be revealed in a minute or two. Yeah, the baron there needs recovering. I'll just send it upstairs. The girls will do it for us. And they used to do that down here in the print party room. We didn't have the, the extra covers, but to the girls upstairs, just do it for me. I can't remember last time I recovered a baron. No idea. When did I do any printing? I've probably forgotten. 
how to do it by now. We're going to need hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these prints. Of course, they go out to Patreon supporters, they go out to uh, business associates here in Japan. You know, the New Year's card, we need at least 600 of them. So once we get printing, it's a real assembly line process. We don't ask just one of the printers to do them all. They'll do batches of 100, I guess, five or six of the kids upstairs, people upstairs. Okay, there's the copies on blank paper. Now the next few copies are done on gumpy paper. We need a few of each. Okay, now this sheet is directly on Gumpy, so this sheet will be transferred to a color block directly. The transformation of the photograph. You know, we took the photograph, I think, I know, Ayana san, she took the photograph a couple of weeks ago, but transforming it into a set of uh, you know, lines and drawings for carving, that was done by Dei Chan, one of our staff printers. She's the girl who did the descending geese design. And she took our photograph a couple of weeks ago and she traced over and drew over and fixed it and adapted it, and it's now become this print. I think that's all I need there, didn't I? Let's just do one more. Okay, so put the key block away for a minute. The tools can now go away, these printing tools, they're done with those. Okay, we have two types, one with Gumpy and one without. Let's do one of the with Gumpy ones first to show you how that part of the process works. This is the straight classical technique here.
There's no registration marks visible on this transfer sheet. We don't need them because the edge of the corner itself is the registration. I've put it into the registration marks to print. So this is automatically now registered. And what I need to do, get my little guide sheet that's giving my instructions for today, what I need to do, we need a block for the sky. What I need to do then with this one is now color in all areas that should be sky. And we're not going to make the sky red like this, although it could be, it doesn't matter. This is not going to be the color of the sky. This is simply showing the areas of wood that will be used to print the sky. I said to print the sky, but actually that wasn't correct. It's going to print the background tone for the entire sheet of paper of all the distant areas, everything that is not the actual sculpture itself. So you get the idea on this one. This is everything except the sculpture. Red markers, courtesy one of the viewers of this stream. Thank you very much. Snowy Evergreen, she sent over these markers. I, was, I kept using ones that were too old and running out. And now I have a supply for the ages. Or a few weeks or something. Lower right, we don't need. That's jet black. That's not going to be involved on this block. That's part of the sculpture itself. So what this, the block we're about to do here, there will be a few zones on here. There's going to be a sky. There's going to be some trees. This is actually Mudabori. You know, we've talked about this before. This line will actually be taken away on the finished print. This is trees. There will be a building. There will be a sky tree. There will be sky. But all of that will be on this block. So we're not going to do the sky as a rich, deep, dark tone on this one. We're going to do the sky very faint and light, and the em em emphasis will be on the, the uh, sculpture itself. Due for some new markers. No, 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 I'm set for a long, long time, perhaps lifetime, depending on how long they last in the, in the cupboard there. If they dry out, I don't know. At the moment, I'm set. Thank you very, very much. Jeans, I'm okay. Marcus, I'm okay. I'm set. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be talking about jeans next week, too. <laughs> okay. All right, here is the cleanest. I've got a bunch of different blocks, and you can see some of them have quite pronounced straight grain. Some of them have the normal. It's interesting. I learned a word. Somebody who was here last week, I don't remember who I was talking to. Somebody visiting last week, he was here, we were talking about the different grain patterns, and they'd been asking why I was having such trouble with wood and blah, blah, blah. We were explaining all the whole thing. And I said, as a sample, I was showing him one like this, and this is what we want, where the grain is only slightly curved. And he said, oh, cathedral grain. And I'm like, what? And he said, this is called cathedral grain. And I've never heard that term before. I don't know what part of the world or what woodworking it's done. But this is the kind of grain pattern we would ideally want no grain visible at all, but by getting this kind of grain, much higher percentage of the wood is open and flat, and such grain as does show is, is spread out so that it's not really soft, hard, soft, hard. When you have straight grain, like the other side of this piece, 
it's your winter wood, summer wood, winter wood, summer hood. And these lines are actually quite hard. The grain there doesn't absorb wood as much as the summer wood. And you get stripes in your pigment. But when you have the wood cut like this, what we call on the plank, the summer wood and the winter wood, the winter wood is, is broken up and spread out. So we really can print without pronounced grain patterns on this kind of a piece of wood. So this is what we want, ideally. But we can't have the wood. Most of the wood in the lumber yards is not cut this way. These days they're cutting for furniture makers and people making stuff that didn't want it to warp. And when you slice it from the log into a, a vertical pattern like this, it tends to warp much less. These blocks warp like crazy. Anyway, long story, long story. Okay, let's get this pasted down. Put them in a mayonnaise jar to help them last longer. You're talking about the, the, the markers, I guess. The ones that haven't been opened, but they are open. They're not sealed in plastic. They're just in a little box like this. So I guess they're actually probably drying out. Put them in a mayonnaise jar or, or, or a plastic bag. Maybe, maybe that might be a great idea. So flats on. So flats on. We would we would uh, use that flats on or uh, on the plank. Doesn't want to come out. How many times can a block be used for printing before the lines get blurry? It depends. It depends. On a certainly thousands if we take care of it. Our great wave print that we're using right now, some of the key lines are rounded. They have become a bit blurred. We're well over 2,000 copies on that one. We chose very hard wood to start with and we print it in small batches so that the wood doesn't get abused. If you've got a piece of wood that's soaking wet and you keep rubbing your brushes over it, it gets rounded very quickly. So the answer there is it depends, but it certainly can do thousands of copies, absolutely. If we were using something like a piece of weak pine or something like this, or, or light plywood, we would get far, far fewer copies. Here at Mocha Hong Kong, we don't. We want to make many copies of the prints, so we use as much as possible a good firm cherry. This piece is fairly soft because we want wide, flat color, and there are very few edges involved. For the key block, we chose a much harder piece, absolutely. I think I put a bit too much, well, no. well so what have we got for Gumpy? Just a minute, what is this Gumpy? Oh, this is antique Gumpy, no peel, just in case you're getting your, your scorecards ready. No, 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 no peel coming. This is the antique Gumpy that's in our shop. 
In fact, it's pretty thin, which means I've got too much paste here. No peel, no peel, no peel. It's so thin, we can just look at it right from the back. Someone keeps talking about the bottom right-hand corner. No, we don't need the bottom right-hand corner. It's part of the stand of the, uh, of the uh, statue. Here's the backing sheet coming off. If that counts as your peel, there you go. <laughs> and you can see why we don't need a peel. My God, look at this. If I try to peel this, it's just gonna make a mess of it. There we go. Nobody could ask for anything better. This is her transfer for her sky block. That antique Gumpy paper really works like a charm. It really, really does. It's been sitting there, we don't really know, a hundred years or something, we have no idea. So that piece of Gumpy paper was made, formed, pre-war. So it's 1930s, could be earlier. We have no idea. There's no dates on the box. 30s, 1940s. But it's been sitting in that pack. It waited through the war. It waited through the fires. It waited here, waited there. Just sat in a box somewhere for 80 years. Now we get it. And this sheet of paper, it comes off one by one by one. And there you are, and this piece of paper is now gonna get destroyed. The carver is gonna destroy the piece of paper, wash it off, and it's gonna go all down the garbage. The paper will be released back into the environment, but it will have waited 80 years and then done its job, helping to make a woodblock print that will survive for another 200 years. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, that's type A. I said I've got two types here. One type is transferring in the absolute classical method. You just saw me do that. Now we have another type here. I'll switch now to do one of the other types. I'm gonna get out one of the pieces of paper that I printed without Gumpy paper. This has been printed without Gumpy. I can't paste this down on a piece of wood to do the transfer because what I'm going to do is I am going to take Photoshop data. I've got too many pieces of wood on my desk here. Hang on a second. Let's zoom out, pull out. Okay, 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 okay. So how are we gonna do this? What's the idea? What's the secret method that's going on here? What it is, is this. I printed this first so that I would know where the outlines are. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna take some Photoshop printout of this, and I'm going to position it on here. This is going to be the block for the undertone for the sky tree, the building, and the tree. It'll be one block that'll be an undertone for all three of those zones. And why didn't we just print it from Photoshop and cut it? Because we really don't know where the lines are. 
it could be that our carver was a, was a, a, a laser genius. It could be that our carver carved exactly as a laser the line that was on there. In which case, I could have printed this from Photoshop and put it on the color block, because the line would be the same. But she's not. She's a human being. She carved, hopefully, with taste and sweep in her knife. The lines she left on this block are probably, hopefully, different from the original Photoshop lines. So I can no longer trust the Photoshop data. So although I need the Photoshop data here for the shape of the sky tree, I can no longer trust the Photoshop data when it comes time to the border lines. So I'm going to print the real line, not the Photoshop line, we're going to print the real line, put this thing over top of it, for which I need better glasses. Position it over top. But now, if I pasted this down for carving, we still don't know where the edge of this zone is, because all we're seeing on this top sheet is the Photoshop data. So what we're going to do, this seems counterintuitive, but really, really, really this works. I'm going to bring back the key block. I'm going to bring back my brush. And I am going to print again. key lines on top of this. So we've got the key lines on the base to show me where I needed to put that sky tree. And we now have perfectly positioned the data from Photoshop, and we can see the outline from the real block. And there are indeed a couple of places where the Photoshop data doesn't actually line up. Bingo. So I'm sorry if this seems uh, excessively complex, but actually it works. It just works like a dream. And that block is now going to get the same treatment. Down she goes. I think we'll use it this way around. Down she goes. I've missed questions, I guess. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm trying to do this carefully, missing questions. Is it a new take on the Hokusai roof print? Well, we don't have Mount Fuji in the background. We have the sky tree in the background. And this is not Edo Castle. This is the creature that lives up on our roof here. And this is the antique Gumpy. Did you just get here? I talked about this a few minutes ago. This is the antique Gumpy.
Ficus. It's actually not a dragon, too. It's not a dragon. It's a, a shachi, a shachi hoko. Which is a cross. If you, depending on the source you read, the shachi hoko is basically a fish. It's a fish body. And then you read various uh, uh, references for it. It's a fish plus a tiger is the one that you read most commonly. And ours is actually positioned backwards. On a castle roof, the shachihoko come in pairs. There's one at each end of the roof, and they don't point outwards like a, a gargoyle or like a roof tile. They point inwards. And the idea, because it's a fish-based creature, the idea is if there is fire, water will pour from their mouths over the roof of the building protecting it from fire. So up on the old castles, the shachihoko faced inwards. They were positioned at the very end of the roof, facing inwards. Ours faces out. So if we ever did have that fire, I don't know if he can do his job properly. Same thing, you've seen it now. I don't know the derivation, Chinese or, or whatever, I really don't know. I don't think there were any tigers here in Japan before. Uh, Someone says Lego. I can swear there's a Lego. T Lego. Ah, is there a Lego piece depicting this? I don't know. Lego news. There's lots of I know, lots of rumors in the Lego world this past couple of weeks. I have a, a Google alert to let me know about Lego news, and I see lots of rumors, interesting rumors happening the last few weeks in the Lego rumor world. What could they be about? I don't know. Again, a bit too much again. I'm, I'm slathering on. I gotta remember this is not the thick gumpy, this is thin gumpy. And if you put too much, there's a real danger that it'll slide around, get distorted. Ha, ha, ha. 
It's too bad these are all on the thin gumpy, you know, because if it weren't, we would have peel after peel after peel today. I'm sorry about this, you know, things are what they are. Actually, I'm not, I can't peel this, but it does need a bit of a rub on the back. That last one came up so clear. This one, because it has no red. So what we will, we will do the classic way here. Excuse me. Blah, blah, blah. Breakfast. We will just rub a little bit off the back. There's not enough to peel, but we can, look at this, we can get clearer. Well, it is sort of peeling, but I'm not about to try that with a full sheet. Yeah, you can sort of peel it. It sort of peels. Okay, there we go. This one then, as I said, pull out, push in, push in. This will be the block for the base tone behind the sky tree. There will be a group of buildings in the background. It's the Asakusa Kokaido, and there will be trees in the front. And they're all getting the same underlying base tone. What's the time? 8.47. Let's do one more. Maybe we could have peeled that, you know. I don't know. Should I take my life in my hands and try and peel the next one? I'm asking you guys that. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. There's seven of these all together. That's two down. Pull out. So what's done here, the, I've got my little list, the sky is done, and then the one for the background of the sky tree, the building, and the tree, that one is done. What should we do next? Let's do, um, let's do the one for the shachi base tone, because we, that's, that's a traditional type, let's do that. For the shachi base tone, because we can see all the outlines, we're going to use the traditional method. So this one should be easy. It's back to the marker. In fact, this block is just going to be the reverse of the first one you saw me do. I did one block for the sky, leaving out the shachi. Now we're going to do the other way round. Messy did. Oh, that's a mistake. Look at that. I went too far. I put some of the background in there. E -e -e. Whatever, she'll figure it out. It's okay. She'll know what to do. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. 
Now this one also needs a piece of wood with a pretty good solid grain, so I think we'll use this piece. Questions, questions, questions. Questions, questions, questions. Questions, questions, questions. Here, I think we're okay. Okay, here we go. Same thing. You've seen this now once, twice, three times. It's just going to get the same, the same, the same. I hope the shop is quiet this morning so I can get this stuff finished. Donna, we have no idea what to expect. The shop here has been, it's been just on some days, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen people coming through all kinds of transactions, and some days, she totally quiet. We have no idea what to expect. Last week's pattern, Friday was super busy. Saturday was medium. Sunday was sleep city. This weekend, I don't know. Yesterday was quite busy, so that seems to be the pattern developing. Fridays are a busy day, it seems. And every day. Every day, the numbers of foreigners walking by outside is increasing dramatically. The first few days after Japan opened up on the 11th, I'm thinking, what? No change. What's going on? Nothing's happening. But now they are here. They are here. It's not back to what it was before, but there's visitors all over the place. That's my job. Most of the foreigners who walk down the street outside, they don't know about us. Some come in, some don't. They just walk by. It's my job now to get back on YouTube and get to the point where everybody who comes to Japan already knows about us. But yes, it's really, really nice to see it coming back. Yesterday actually was a day from Asia. I said it was busy Friday. We had people from Singapore, from Malaysia, from the Philippines. For some reason, it seemed like an Asian day yesterday. I got most of them too, you know. What happens? We hear, we hear people chatting outside. I'm sitting here at the bench doing something. I can hear people chatting in, you know, should we go in, shall we go in, whatever. We say nothing. They come in and they, they, they may say hello or whatever. And then it, it's my job to sort of guess. What have I been doing? The two ladies yesterday, they were, they were kind of chubby, very, very cheerful ladies. They were absolutely, obviously a type. And I said, I'm getting a vibe, Philippines, right? And they're all, oh, how did you know? And I'm like, it's kind of obvious, actually, whatever. So they giggle, giggle, giggle. 
Philippine ladies, they're fine. You can say anything. They're really happy, cheerful people and, uh, and <laughs> whatever their type. So they come in. They didn't buy anything, whatever. They went. We chatted for a while. Out they go. Next couple comes in. It's a, it's a couple. Uh, they're whatever, in their 40s, 50s. They spoke a little bit. And I'm getting this. And think, okay, I can see this. Oh, hello, thank you. Oh, yeah, good. Like this print. Good. You're from Singapore, right? Yes. How did you know? Well, you, you look and feel and taste and smell like Singapore, you know, whatever. You get, you know, people from different countries really, really are quite different. You know, it's, it's fun. But, but having said that, but, 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 the, the Akasaka-san, our staff member who was, who was working here with me, you know, he's like, how did you do that? I said, look, I've been working here for years. We've had the shop for eight years. People all, you know, if you go overseas, they're going to know you're Japanese, right? He says, well, I guess so, you know. Whatever, you can mostly tell. So I'm showing off to the guy. Another couple comes in. They were a bit younger than the first and the second couple I mentioned, but they had the same feeling, a little bit of a Chinese accent. They look whatever, whatever. So I thought, here we go. You're also from Singapore. And they looked at me blankly and said, Hong Kong. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you win some, you lose some. And the European ones are sometimes difficult because people travel so much in Europe. They'll be born in one place, live in another place. They've got a, a mix of vocal inflections and accents. And the, the obvious ones, somebody who's been living in Paris all his life, you can, you can tell where he's from, you know, or someone who's from Cornwall or something. You can get these. But lots of them, it's just you get lost. And the other day or a few days ago, whatever, there was a, a group of ladies here or something, and I couldn't pin the country, but I said, I'm getting, I'm getting Eastern Europe, right? And they looked blankly at me, and they said, Belgium. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's really sometimes for Europeans, it's really, really sometimes difficult. No, so you're making the wrong guess. I know this is all a very friendly thing. We're just breaking the ice here, you know. And they're tourists traveling, so people are always curious where they're from, you know. And if this was a Japanese shop, the Japanese person would ask them, oh, hello, welcome to Japan. Where are you from? You know, this is, it's a common, it's a common question, you know. So. But yeah, you're right. Guessing first and having the answer come back is sometimes a bit dangerous. There's a classic one here, which I don't even try anymore. It's Southern Pacific or something, Oceania. And I used to say, oh, you sound like you're from Australia. And, you know, eight times out of 10, they'd say yes. But then two times out of 10, they would say, New Zealand. And they weren't happy to be labeled as Australians. So I don't do that one anymore. But the comeback is simple. I say, oh, I know how you feel. I get the same thing here myself. People will say, you're from America, right? And I say, Canada. <laughs> so it's the same thing. We were going to try a peel. Should we just do that just for fun? Just for fun? We don't need to. I mean, my God, she can see what to carve here. But let's just live dangerously. Why not? What's the worst that could go wrong? The worst that could go wrong is that this one is not going to peel. No, it's just not going to peel. Look at this. It just doesn't come off. That last one peeled so nicely. This one is just not going to peel. No, it can't be done. Let's just rip it off. It's okay. I think actually it's the difference in moisture. That first one that did, did sort of semi-peel, I think it's because I made it quite wet. And the water soaked into it and it sort of came apart. This one, I didn't put so much glue on it. And this is actually pasted down. It's dry now to the feel. So we're not going to play. We're just going to leave this as it is. They're all pasted down the same way. It wasn't a question of front or back. Because when I made those sheets, I made them all exactly the same way. Anyway, there we are. She knows what to do. So you can see how this thing's coming together. There's going to be a faint tone for the sky, and it's going to be just a light sky. It won't even be blue. I think we're going to put this as though there was a morning light. 
So it's going to be very faint and there might be, we're going to test this, there might be a gradation coming up from the bottom that will be actually hidden behind the trees, hidden behind the building, and it might come up into the sky area. We'll see. This is still to be tested. There will then be a base, a dirty tone for the Shachihoko. We're thinking on a dark, dirty blue, not too dark, but a, a, a dirty blue tone for the Shachihoko. Then what else is there going to be? There's going to be a pattern. Shachihoko base tone. That's done now. Oh, wait, that's this one. Hi. Have we got time for one more? 901. We do have time for one more. Let's do the trees. And that's also going to be a straight Shogo Suri. Now, this one's easy. This one is dead easy. And here we get our Mudabori. On the drawing here, we have a line that marks the top of the trees. This will not appear in the finished print, but we needed it here. We needed it at this point to show where the tree stops. Also, if it turned out that this design had some other elements, if there was uh, something floating up here, we could have put it on this same block. But there isn't anything else close enough. There is a sky tree. It's too close. It's going to have to be on its own block. And there's a building in the middle here that will, of course, be on its own block. Someone says, maybe I missed it, but who designed this print? There's no specific designer. Ayano-san took a photograph up on our rooftop a couple of weeks ago. She took a photograph of the Shachihoko and the sky tree. And then our printer, Dei-chan, she took that photograph and she sketched on top of it to make the lines of this design. So when we say who designed it, whatever, we're going to give the uh, a royalty. There will be a 10% royalty on it. And we'll give that to Dei-chan, because she did the actual work of doing all the color separations and drawing the Shachihoko lines. So she'll get the royalty for the designer on this. And this is Dei-chan. There's a confusion here. This is not the Dei-chan some of you knew in the print parties and in the shop. We have two Dei ladies in our organization. At the moment, one is here. Dei-chan from Hong Kong is a printer. We also had Asano Dei-chan working in our print parties, a young lady. She at the moment is not with us. She's over in the Czech Republic going to medical school. So that Rei-chan, R-A-Y, Dei-chan, is not with us right now. We hope to get her back one day when she retires from her career as a doctor. So there are two days. So 
Someone says, Dave, do I own a car? I have never owned a car, not in my life. I've never owned a vehicle. I had a license when I worked for the music company. I drove all over the place. I drove all over Western Canada, company vehicles, and Winnebago, our trucks and vans. But I have never owned a car. I never had any interest in it. And here in Tokyo, my God, ir irrelevant, absolutely. So someone says, Dave has a rusty bike. That's my only vehicle at the moment. And it's actually, it's, it's now gone. I was looking at it a couple of weeks ago, a month ago when I was in Ome last. It is now a dear departed bicycle. It's gone beyond uh, what is recoverable. So for the first time in my, in my life since I was whatever, five years old or something, I now no longer have even a bicycle. Never had a car, never had a TV. No, nope, don't have a TV. It's not TV in the building. And I've, since when, I, when, I, when I was a child, there was sometimes a TV in the house and sometimes there wasn't. There were part, times in our life when uh, my dad was doing well and times when he wasn't doing well and we had a TV at one point and it broke down and he wasn't actually doing very well for those few years. So we had no TV. We went with no TV for years and years and years. But since leaving home, I've never had one. When I had a family here, when I was mar you know, married to a Japanese lady, we had two kids. We had no TV in the house. All of us were on the same, uh, we were on board with that. A TV, it's interesting, the TV in the car, I think we've talked about this. We've probably had the same conversation before. There's something kind of backwards and different about them. A TV or the existence of television is obviously really useful for society. We can see things around the world, we learn things, society and different cultures blends more easily because we all know what's going on. So TV and the existence of broadcasting is wonderful for society, but it tends to be deadening to the individual. Sit in your sofa, you don't do anything, you take, you take, you take, you don't put back. So it can be wonderful for society, but it can sometimes be destructive for the individual, which is one reason why I don't want it in my home. I don't want to become a vegetable. And a car, it's the other way around. A car can be really useful for the individual. Go here, go there, wow, perfect, thanks, wonderful. It's perfect for the individual, and as we've seen, it's grotesquely destructive to society. So those two things have an interesting, you know, interesting impact back and forth, you know. Japanese TV, my God, don't even, just, just don't even go there. Don't even go there. I put more, I uh, put more paste on this one, so I guess, how does he even get a peel? Can we get a peel from this? We don't need to, but let's try this. <laughs> it's not going to work either. <laughs> the only time we get a peel is when I wasn't trying to get one. Look at this. Here it is. It peels off in, in bits and pieces. No, we're just making a mess. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> How's our time? 9.09. You can see how this works. Today, what a master class in color transfers today. Wonderful. You can get it. You can see it, how this works. And you can see the zone there. And again, we said the same thing. This is not going to be red. This one obviously almost certainly is going to be green. It'll be some trees in the background. And this print is going to be plains. There will be trees farther back a building, farther back the sky tree. Okay, what should we do? We've got to keep going. There's more. There's more. It's still some time. 9, 10. Let's check off my list. That was the tree. That's one, two, three, four done. There are three more. 
let's grab another one. It's going to be one of those paste on transfers. Where did I put them? Oh, hey there, there's one of them. That railing, you're worried about the railing being on the tree block. The railing is going to be black. It's going to blot out everything behind it. So it's far easier. Let's go back to that block we just finished, the tree block. Someone's asking about that. What did I do with it? Here it is. This is a point that confused me when I was a beginner at this. The railing is here. The railing is going to be in front on this print. It'll be printed in black and the tree block actually will be in the distance. But yet I've put the green on top of the railing. Why did I do this? The tree is going to be done with transparent pigment and it may come last. The railing will be printed first along with the black block here, but that will be completely dense black. It'll be opaque. Now the green tree will be behind it in real life and it won't be visible. But it sounds silly. Why is the green there? It shouldn't be there. But if I tried to cut out the green, I could cut out that big piece, then I could cut out this piece, and then I could cut out this piece. We don't need to do that because the green will be transparent. It goes behind it. It's not necessary to cut it out. It does look counterintuitive, I get it. And at the beginning, I was thinking, how's this gonna work? How's this gonna work? And sometimes with my color blocks, I did. And if you imagine a color, well, okay, think about the same thing here. Imagine if it was color was overlaid here. You can't cut out all these black lines. Your color is transparent. The black goes on first, the color then comes on top of it, but it appears to be behind it. You can't chop out all these little black lines. Trust me, trust me, trust me. The Japanese tradition uses transparent pigments for the most part, not opaque pigments. And it works, it works. Nine fourteen. Nine fourteen. Okay, well, we're going to call it quits then here, obviously. We're going to call it here. This one, although it looks the same as the last one, what we're going to do with this one, I get it in two tone. She will carve for this one just the building and the sky tree. The previous undertone was sky tree, building, and grass, and tree. This one is just going to be the building and sky tree. Okay. Let's call it a day. It's, it's uh, show and tell time. I'm happy with the stream. We got a bunch of work done. That's good. Some of the streams are, are busy, busy, sort of busy work, but I don't get much done. What's going on outside? It's the first rickshaw cart of the day. He stops at this corner. And he's explaining, 
he's explaining the idea about the, the comedian's pictures on the, on the, down the street. He's got a wide stance because he's holding the weight. The, the, the people are sitting in the cart, but he's, of course, holding it steady. And they do that. He's got a wide stance, and his bum is on one of the rails, the railings. Not so common to see him this time in the morning. Have you seen the video? There's a famous, famous video on YouTube. I think it's got like seven, eight, nine million views by now. There's one of the young girls who comes by here. I think her name is Yuka-chan, Yuka-san. And she's, uh, she's just, she's small, short, lightweight, not skinny in a bad way, but she's a very slight, slim little girl. And she's an adult, but she looks like she's about 12 years old. And she pulls these carts around. And she will be here soon. She will, she will be here soon. And we will see her maybe three times, four times, five times, six times today. It's a weekend. She does her route round and around and around and around and around. And it's so funny to see her. And sometimes she's got like a couple, a Western couple, a giant people in this rickshaw cart. And this lovely little slim girl is just hauling this thing around. And I think she's become a bit of an internet sensation. I think her name is Yuka. Y-U-K-A, if somebody Googles it, Yuka Rickshaw Cart Asaksa. And she's smiling and happy and cheerful and just whatever. Everybody loves her. Everybody that sees her just cannot help but break into smiles at the idea. And she's just hoofing this thing down the street. Has somebody found it? Okay, what am I doing? Uh, show and tell. Okay, for the last time, we're going to finish off that bag of stuff that we saw that, that arrived a while ago. We're not going to go back and see the same ones we saw, but let's finish off that bag because there are more treasures in here. We've seen a bunch of these already. I think we looked down. We went through all these. We've been through this part of it. But yeah, we've been through there, but we haven't seen it. So let's finish off this bag today. And then get back to our regularly scheduled programming. Oh, Ishika san, hi, domo. Kyo, nani? Ano, Tokaido? Eh, Tokaido? Tokaido no mono. Nani, Juichi katsu no sakuhin? Ah, yari kita? So. Mo, kyo de kia arimasu. Ah, so desu ka? Good, 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 good. Yeah, nani, ome ga, nani, dari ga trimming to ka. Ah, itte aru, demo. Hmm? Ishibashi san, Ishigami san ni itte arimasu. もう月末にできるから。オッケーオッケー。いや、だからだから、トリミングの仕事はやっぱり私ですね。明日。だから、今日、あの、今夜帰る前にいれる。そうそう。オッケー。で、僕明日出して、チョクチョクチョクチョク
because they have, a number of them, have memos and notes scribbled on them. And here is one such. This is a print that would have been put into a book explaining old Japanese uh, ceramics. And they made a woodblock print showing the particular ceramic. And this is a proof print from that. And what we see here is the print has been done. It might be finished. There may be more colors to come. We don't know. But there's somebody in the workshop has written. And it's the same thing we saw the other day. Usuku, 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 usuku. Lighter, 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 lighter. So we know that these are proof prints from a workshop. Exactly what this one would have been, I have no idea. Is this a single print that would have been put out into the world? Or is this something that would have been chopped up? Or has this paper been used for testing? We have no idea. We've looked at this and tried to figure it out. The entire surface of the paper is coated with mica powder, ummo in Japanese. So the paper first has mica powder, and then on top of it, there are these little designs. And they're sort of New Year type designs. The crane is a New Year emblem, as is the plum blossom, as is pine. I don't remember the name of this particular pattern, but given that three of the four are New Year symbols, perhaps that one is also. So I don't know whether this was intended to be sold as a woodblock print, or whether it's chiogami to be chopped up, or whether it's maybe a piece of wrapping paper. It could have been that there was one more block coming that had the name of a shop, and this would be done as wrapping paper around merchandise. I don't know, but it's very nicely, beautifully made. And it, there's a little hint. It says 6, 5. There's two numbers here, 6 and 5. No idea. We will probably never, ever know, and no way to find out. Now, this, we know what it is. Can you tell from the shape here? I think we're getting too much light. Let's kill it. Oh, Kensan, good morning. Hello, hello. Hey, hey. Is it that time already? You're a bit early. Okay, hey. Here we go. Okay, these next few are all a similar pattern. And yes, somebody's got it. These are sleeves. These are sode patterns. Sode is a kimono sleeve. And these would have been pages intended for some kind of catalog which had kimono patterns. And this particular group is really, really, really nicely made. And Konigami's asking, are those all from Kondo Hapodo? If I was going to guess, I'd say yes. They have the same kind of paper. They have the same kind of printing. They have the same look and feel. I would guess exactly. These are all from the same publisher. Or they're from a printer's office who worked multiple jobs for that same publisher. I think, but I don't know. They're all woodblock prints, you know. This is all done with carved and printed blocks. Just exactly the same technique you saw me using. It's insane. Absolutely insane. These, this is a gradation put on separately. All these little red tips to these leaves. It's a separate gradation. So the leaves would have been printed first in their base color. And then the same block would have been used again, and the guy would come on and rub, bit of red, chuk, 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 put the paper on and print it. All separately printed. The level of work involved to make these prints is just nuts. Nuts. These are woodblock prints, you know? <laughs> just whatever. It just keeps going on and on and on and on. Every line you see is carved. 
every color you see is printed. And again, that's a separate gradation. The brush would have to come in once, twice, three times, four times, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What have they done here? A transparent effect? I'm not sure what they've done. The underlying flower shows through the top flower. I'm not sure. This looks wrong. This looks actually wrong at this point. What have they done? Well, these are proof copies, so who knows? And again, more gradations. The gradation on these flowers. It's just... <laughs> If you ask me to count how many printing impressions there are on a simple print like this, which is one page of a multi-page catalog, I can't even count how many there are. No idea. No idea. These are absolute treasures. It's somebody else's junk, but for us now, this is an absolute treasure. There will never, ever be work like this done on this planet ever again. Never. This one is different. This is not a woodblock print. We were looking at this the other day. I don't know who is Sugusan and I were looking at this the other day. And Aimi-san, she wants to take this home. This is not a woodblock print. It is painted on, and this must be, in the same workshop, this must be a design that was intended for later making as a print. It got made into a print. I have no idea. We've never come across it. But what you're seeing here is not a print. <clears throat> and all the tones here, these are done with <laughs> blowing. They, they get a, a, a pigment, put it in, I don't know, you blow, it's a, it's a human version of an airbrush. Fukidashi technique. And they're blown through a straw, and the pigments come out as a gradation. Pretty much at the bottom of this grab bag, we have data. Look at this. We have data. This looks like a page. Another one. This also looks like kimono or fabric patterns, but we have data. I didn't see this. Look, 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 look. What have we got here? How much of this am I going to be able to read? It's the publisher to show. What's the publisher's name? I don't know how, 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 how. We have it here. We have it here. What's the publisher's name? Remind me again. I've forgotten. I don't know. One sec. Let me let me check with this. One sec. Let me get back to my reference page here. One second, please. Here are the characters. Kondo Hapodo. This is that publisher's name in Japanese. This is Kondo Hapodo, and that's not what we're seeing here. So at this point, I don't think it's the same publisher. At the moment, all I can get from the bottom, this is print number 10. This is number 10 in what would have been a set. This is Daijuzu. Number, number 10 in the series. And I'm guessing Hapo Do to show. This is the 8, Hachi. Quite different. I don't know. Hapo. This is Do. I don't know. I don't know. But it gives us a way to find out. Okay. Yep, got it wrong. Pull out, push in. I'm just trying to get through now this to get to the bottom of this pile because I don't want to come back to it. <laughs> 
It's got to be from the same thing, from the same book. And it is, it's, it's proof. It's the printer just using random pieces of paper. It's the same print. There's the backside look. Going in there, what's oh, upside down? That would be there. That would go in there. This one would go here. It's just printer's testing sheets. It's even blurred. He's printed the same color more than once and they're blurred up. So test sheets, printer's test sheets. So maybe that's the finished product. I think we're at the bottom of it now. Here we are. Okay, the last two sheets. This one is not a wood block print. This is, it's very delicate paper. It's going to break if I'm not careful with it. It's not a wood block print. It's obviously in the same workshop. It's a design that has been handed in, presumably to become a wood block print. If I got it upside down, which way up does it go? Well, I think it's okay. It's an umbrella, a wagasa with some kind of decorations hanging from the inside of it, and we have a couple of chickens. And whether it ever became a print, I don't know. I could maybe put it into Google image search and see if it pops up and see if we find the print. That would be really cool if we could ever find that it did become a print. At the moment, I don't know. I don't have any data on this. But this is very, very carefully prepared. This is all brushed, you can see. It's all brushed by hand. The book we saw, the 100 Poems book, was 1932. So this stuff generally dates from all I can say on or about 1932. That's when that book was published. Here's the last one. This actually is quite beautiful. Look at this. Oh, and it's misregistered. What have they done? I believe it's a tea ceremony canister, I think. I believe it's a, 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 a kettle for hot water for tea, I think. Don't quote me, I'm not quite sure on that. But it looks like a metal. It's got handles that you could handle the hot one with. Tea goods, yes, I think it's tea goods. I don't have any idea what's happening here at the top with the red. Whether that's a test print and this red was supposed to be printed here and it's misregistered, I don't have any idea. And what is the object here? It's a stick with a white, and all the shrine guys have those sorts of sticks with white threads and string and paper. Is that related to that? I don't know. I don't know. It's past my pay grade. I don't know. Oh, good morning. I'm Isan. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm Isan. Sir, she wants her blocks. No, <laughs> so. I mean, that. Boom. Boom. Fuku. Cha. うん。どう。ちゃんとじゃあちゃんとのグッズですかえ、でもどうだ。そのどうじゃないでしょ、ちゃんとのどう。文部区茶釜じゃないの。のアイデア。それからこれなんですか。文部区茶釜だよ。た
So it must, be, it must have been a series of kids' stories. Interesting. Boom, 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 boom. Well, well, well. Contour's got a link to it. Thank you, sir. So the red block is misregistered. Chup, 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 chup. And because some printer made a mistake back then, we've got this. You know, Surishi ga zuritan desu kara, nani, Suri hon kara nukitan. So, what does that mean? Moratan desu. ってる。<笑><笑> So uh, they say I do the same thing. When I was printing, if just one is wrong, you leave it in the deck to keep the deck the same size. You know, so, so. <coughs> okay, anyway, there we are. It's 9.30. It's time for me to, as you heard, it's time for me to get busy and get the shop open. Ken is here today to work with me. He and I are doing it together. Amy san is hovering. She wants blocks or something. Hangi? No, oh no. Put it kind of on mascara. I gotta get out of here. Just a second. Let's put the outside up. She came to get the Matsushima blocks. Remember at the beginning of this stream, I said I had two different choices what to do. Okay. I could carve Matsushima. Kawasaki san no shigoto ga. Mai ni. Are you going to do it? That's why it's going to be done. This stream is this one or this one. Kawasaki san is now waiting. Kawasaki san is now waiting. Okay, then I'll, I'll, I'll start right away. I'll start right away. I'll start right away. No, I almost hung. Oh, so cool. okay. She wants it. I should have done that first, but whatever, 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 whatever. I'm a little bit in the doghouse. Okay, I gotta get out of here. I got some work to do. I gotta get out of here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, I gotta get that done. Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you two more days, Monday morning. Not sure what job will be going on, but uh, it's. Surfer girl, I guess, whatever. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. See you soon. <laughs>